Game two between Frost and Doodle. Bottom right hand corner, we have Frost as the green Terran. Bottom left hand corner, we have Doodle as the blue Protoss. I feel like the colors should be swapped, right? I don't know. What is the color of Doodling? Maybe white for, you know, like paper or black for a pen? I don't know. This is going to be on Shakura's Plateau. More of a macro oriented map, which maybe will, honestly, if we see Frost's early game build order, I don't know, seemed a little bit all over the place and off a little bit. Because this is such a large map, because it's more macro oriented, it might favor his style of play. Honestly, I feel like any big macro oriented map where you can easily take a third without having to worry about it too much favors Terran these days, but that's neither here nor there. Doodle. Plopping down a pylon at the natural expansion, interestingly enough. So I think he is going to go for a 12 Nexus. That's usually what that indicates. There are a lot of ways you can counter that, but I've seen some Terran flounder. It just feels like there's a whole bunch of flash builds that work well against this. There's also the option to follow it up with a quick expansion yourself, depending on how you want to do it. He's going to end up scouting upper left first. I take it back. Gateway at the natural expansion. Almost playing this like a PVZ. That's gonna allow the Zelts to get into Frost Spathe a little bit faster. We're seeing a barracks alongside the command center. Marines can run through. With that early Zealot pressure, which I assume we're gonna see here, because usually I, I don't know what the logic would be behind putting that gateway down there. Otherwise, unless he was just really, really, really wanted to deny a scout to Frost. Something along those lines. We don't see an assimilator being plopped down for Doodle, so again, I do think we are just going to see one gate, Zealot Pressure. That was something that was very popular on this map, I recall, and even Proxy One Gate was a popular thing, mostly because what it did is it, not because it was like a killing blow versus Terran, but it was a legitimate build because it forced Terran into a different style of builds. Like, you couldn't just go for, like, the flat economic, that was kind of in the heyday of everybody was doing the, the two one-time push. Only two SCV and gas. Third SCV now joining, first Marine being produced. And finally, this probe making its way across, and he's going to be able to get in the base, but just as that Marine's going to be assailing it with bullets from the sky. Fortunately for Doodle, the scout's going to come into his base last. And also fortunately for Doodle, this Marine might be out of position to deal with the Zealot factory being built. Marine having some trouble ending around that Zealot practically like wandering into the natural expansion, nothing blocking that front door. And we do see one SCV pulling off gas, or so only one SCV on gas. So Doodle was thinking, or Frost was thinking, oh, I'm just gonna go one into expansion. That probe gonna lead these Marines closer to that Zealot. The Zealot now in the front. Now keep in mind, this probe is now a battle probe. It can join in the fight. Marines trying to run around, accidentally attacking their own factory. That factory is Maybe going to get disrupted by that Zealot. Second Zealot making its way around that natural expansion. This is going to be two Zealots versus three Marines. With some micro, can be some success. Unfortunately, Zealot having some trouble getting on top of those Marines. Another Zealot's making its way across. That SCV scout just finally getting inside this base. Factory is up. Might see a Vulture. This is going to be four Marines and a Vulture momentarily versus these Zealots. Two SCVs pulling off the line. And unfortunately, this harassment from Doodle just has not accomplished a lot. First Vulture Warping, and that is going to bring that... The Zealot's just going to meander here now at the natural. As Frost was hoping to go ahead and just plop down the command center to follow. Instead, is going to have to wait a little while. And another Zealot... Okay, now it's going to pull back to the main. Dragoon being produced as well. I think the... Yeah, the SCV is already there. Seeing a second gateway and a silent cybernetic score. So with all of that, that should give... Kind of interesting placement of that machine shop right alongside the refinery. That should give Frost a sizable early game lead economically. That's essentially three zealots for two marines. That's a very fair trade. Dragoon is going to be here to deal with this vulture and push it back. That Dragoon taking a little bit of, or sorry, that zealot taking a little bit of free shield damage as they swap places. Doodle going ahead and grabbing his natural expansion to follow this up. But everything, at least early game, going right for Frost. Not perfect, but going well. He's actually going to research mines to follow this up again. 
Interesting. Opting no Siege Tank even. Realizing that he's basically... I like that play though. Because he knows he's got this Dragoon pinned back to deal with the Vultures. And with that Research of Mines, might be able to establish a little bit of map control. Plopping Mines out on the front. And force Doodle into Robo play one way or the other. We see Citadel of Adun being warped in. Robotic facility as well. It's possible Doodle was thinking, okay, I need to do DT drop or something along those lines. Starport, Engineering Bay to follow. So maybe again with Vulture Mind Drop, although it's going to be slow Vulture Mind Drop. Doodle walking in. Keep in mind this Dragoon does not have range. Kind of risky. Just walking into that natural expansion to see whether there was a base there or not. Sees the base. Some mines being plopped to the north. So if there were Dark Templar walking on the ground, they would be... They need to do some uh, mine sweeping. Speaking of mine sweeping, that Dragoon now wiped out above that 6 o'clock expansion. Doodle grabbing his Assimilator. So I, I think he's going to go for a little bit heavier tech play here. Templar Archives, yeah, definitely going to go for a Dark Templar drop. But we already see some turrets being planted. Critically, though, for Frost, he's once again stuck to just a single factory in this early game. A single factory with Vultures. And he might be a little bit over, overly reliant on these mines out on the front. And so it is possible that this shuttle with these Dark Templar could be end up being more effective than they would be otherwise. Even with this detection, because honestly, two Dark Templar can shoot through a turret rather rapidly. And this just... What is this? Two Vultures and a Marine? So a handful of Marines and Vultures to deal with those Dark Templar. And there's no Comsat that has been built just yet. For Frost. So the still... Granted, there's still some timing before these Dark Templar end up in the main. But these could be very effective Dark Templar considering how thin the defense force is. Shuttle, with Vultures being loaded up for Frost to do his own drop play. So Shuttle's going to be heading both directions. Unfortunately, I think with that, that's even fewer defense forces at the main for Frost. So these Dark Templar are going to have a field day, honestly, here. So unloaded. Going to go ahead and unload now. The Marines moving their way out. Honestly, I don't know that there's enough Marines to deal with these Dark Templar. And that turret's going to be taken out rapidly. No detection now. So Dark Templar reigning free. Academy is up. They're going to work on that armory first. Looking for the drop otherwise in the main while this is happening. Level 1 still being upgraded. SCV's group repairing that. Honestly, I feel like these Dark Templar might have even gotten more accomplished at another location. Vultures have been unloaded inside Doodle's base. Looks like some Dragoons and some Zealots grouping up to go ahead and deal with that. Even a Dark Templar. They're going to be able to see that Doodle's very rapidly moving towards 2 base Arbiter. Comsat, but... The shuttle's there and no anti-air, so that Comsat's going to be uh, kind of useless. Not totally useless. It got some free damage. And those Dark Templar are going to back up upon seeing that starport blinking, knowing that there's a Wraith in the air. Overall, Frost sitting at 36 workers. Ended up losing his army, which is going to slow down that timing. He's going to go ahead and grab another command center. Still anybody's game, but considering there's... We'll see how it works. 46 workers... Currently for Doodle, he's kind of out macroing Doodle currently. And Doodle playing things very, very thin. No observatory yet, critically. Two base Arbiter. Or sorry, uh, there is an observatory, but no observers. The word I'm looking for. To go ahead and clear these mines out at the front. Frost has not really kept up. Well, honestly, he's been doing so, much, so many techie things. I don't know that he's really kept up on his macro. Been trying to do essentially everything at once, including grabbing a Wraith. Grabbing two Wraith now. And another turret along that corner. Here's the thing. Two Wraith, two tanks. Looks like some additional machine shops. He's still, again, very kind of playing a, a greedy style. Where he wants to try to go ahead and take this third base where I don't think he has the troop, the, the troop count to do it. So maybe he's going to try to use Wraith and uh, looks like he put an SCV in this dropship. Maybe some additional Vulture Harass. And try to use his offense as his defense. Once again. 
playing very, very risky here. Force, only force these tanks two vultures on the front with those marines in the bunker. Doodle, 20 supply up, is going to have arbiters in not too long from now. It's going to be cloaked wraith on top of everything else. One critical component here <clears throat> is with those cloaked wraith. Honestly, I don't like cloaked wraith this late in the match, given what we see. Because it doesn't take, because they're, they're paper. They do not survive very long at all. And you're just counting on essentially, I mean, they're good for scouting, I guess. I kind of like it for scouting and taking down. I like it is like counter shuttle play. I like it in that regard, but upgrading cloaking just seems like a waste of gas to me. Maybe to deal with the Arbiter, though. Kind of an interesting play there, but there's still going to be observers to deal with that otherwise. So I think I think the idea here for Frost is, I'm, okay, rather than going Goliaths, I'm going to go Wraith to go ahead and, and just try to take that Arbiter down very, very rapidly. He's moving up, going to go ahead and Take that command center. Good comps at taking at least one initial Dark Templar down. Not really able to slow that command center. And so I guess I take it back. Uh, Doodle not in position to really punish this. What is that? Three siege tanks, a handful of vultures. Arbiter in the air. Recall now being researched. Zealot with leg speed up. I don't know. Maybe these Wraith will be the X Factor. Science Facility upgrading level 1 weapons will be online momentarily. And Doodle setting up to go ahead and take the upper 9 o'clock base. He does have a jump start on at least the overall Arbiter count. Comparatively. He's got that second Arbiter which will be out momentarily. And currently up 28 supply. Still anybody's match. Frost again going for more of that Three base style. Gonna go three base, trying to shell up, force Doodle to come to him. Vulture scrambling across. Cannon is not in place now at the nine o'clock. This is nice timing for Frost to go ahead and catch this base. No level weapons upgrades currently for Doodle, comparatively. So the upgrade's gonna be even once again. Vulture's not bothering with that nine o'clock base. Just going to drop a handful of mines. The Dragoon is going to get taken out. Forcing Doodle to be a little bit defensive. They're, that Zealot's probably going to get taken out in that upper left hand as well. So currently, as we look at it, this is 4 base Protoss versus 3 base Terran. Doodle up about 30 supply, which is a significant lead. The Arbiter count is growing for Doodle. But there are Wraith somewhere. <laughs> I lost track of them. They were built here. They're out in the field somewhere now. Once I figure out where they're at, we'll, we'll see what kind of harassment they or how much of a, a factor they can play. Might be able to take down those Arbiters pretty rapidly. And keeping that Arbiter count low can be the difference oftentimes in these matches. Maybe I missed them all dying here at the 6 while all that was happening. I don't think so, though. I still think they're they're being held back. Where are they? This makes me sad now. If I if I miss that attack, it'd be very, very sad. Vulture's diving in. There they are. So yeah, rather than so maybe they'd be able to sneak a quick kill against an Arbiter. That Arbiter is making its way. Oh, this is lucky. Arbiter making its way across. It did have enough energy for recall. It gets wiped out. So nice pick off there by Frost. So these Wraith actually paying off. Stasis online, two more Arbiters being built out of those Stargates. I feel like Frost doing a good job of keeping some pretty good vision across the map otherwise. Comparatively for Doodle, he's got pretty good vision for more of a defensive style. You kind of see it both directions. Doodle now establishing himself in the middle of the map. And here's the thing, he needs to, even though he's, so he's at 200-200. Needs to start doing stuff. He has hit this before level 2 weapons have come online. Frost is happy to sit back and try to play this defensive game as long as... And basically, his goal is hold, survive, win. Starve Doodle out. 
It does have all sorts of, sorts of vultures very well locked up here to that upper right-hand base. It's going to be a little bit of time. But here's the thing. With all of those units out of position, these factories somewhat exposed. Wow, I think Frost realizing it. He's going to go ahead and try to take that 6 o'clock base. Is setting up very anti-recall defenses along that southern perimeter. Some Dragoons getting splatted in the meantime over that corner. Arbiter looking for some space to maybe get a recall in. Gets into the main. Does get a recall of a handful of Zealots and Dragoons. The Wraith right there to try to take care of what's left. That's going to pull that command center back. But Frost right on top of it. Between reinforcements and the Siege Tanks very quickly stomping that out before he loses any infrastructure. Really only lost maybe uh, a handful of turrets. Honestly, I feel like... So what is that? An Arbiter down, several Dragoons... And I don't think he was able to... Not a very good trade for, for Doodle right there. Doodle moving some units to go ahead and clear the rest up. I think the critical thing here is keeping that Arbiter count high now for Doodle. Only has two Arbiters out in the field and really getting a critical stasis, I think, at the north. If he could stasis this back line and bring in some Zealots, might be able to get something accomplished there. Frost once again trying to move out and take that 6 o'clock base. Pressing forward to go ahead and establish a bit of a line. Doodle engaging. This is where these Wraith could be gold. The Wraith getting stasis rather than the Siege Tanks. Another Arbiter moving up. Are they going to get that back? Wow, so many Siege Tanks stasis, stasis on that back line. That's going to allow those Vultures to get cleared out. More Siege Tanks grouping up from the north. But the Zealot's already going to be on top of them. Beautiful stasis from Doodle. And even some Dragoons and Zealots slipping through that line. He still might want to camp on the rest of that. Looks like he's going to back out and let that stasis clear out. That's forcing a liftoff at the 6 o'clock base. So going to actually might even be able to take the command center out. Re-engaging. Unfortunately, with what's left of this attack force, I think that's going to be uh, wiped out once it's desasis. Looks like that is, in fact, the case. Command center was taken out the 6. So Doodle forcing Frost to stay on three bases. He has some Zealots camped up. Kind of the next uh, base over. <laughs> Another stasis to keep that Arbiter alive. Some SCVs distance mining, but going to be able to wander in. We do have a Science Vessel with full energy pouring into this. Level 2 weapons, level 1 armor. And the Command Center just being built now for Frost. His main is mined out. His natural expansion is almost mined out. He'll basically be at two base. He's already preemptively building a Command Center to try to float up and take the 2 o'clock base. And Doodle very quickly getting back up to 200 supply. His Arbiter count is in fact growing. wonder if he's going to try to play... Where he's going to go for the attack after this. Very successful attack. It feels like, okay, yeah, he's got that army, but it's... I'm not sure where it's where he wants it to be. Wraith sneaking and going to be able to take out that Arbiter that was lurking here to the south. Doodle re-establishing some map control to the north. But again, this is kind of... Frost is happy to do this. Happy to continue to work on those weapon upgrades. Happy to allow Doodle to just waste army on top of... And he just wants to go ahead and hit that 200 point himself and continue to re-establish bases. Fortunately for him, he's basically mining at just one base here. Doodle, in the meantime, establishing upper left-hand corner. Also establishing that 10 o'clock base in earnest. His main somehow still up a little bit. It looks like he pulled off a lot of units. Diving in. Some stasis on some transferring SCVs. Siege Shanks actually not here in position. Starting to wander up the Dragoons, taking the high ground as a result. More Siege Shanks grouping up. Nice defense matrix on that front Siege Shank, but... This does give an opportunity for Doodle to sneak in and take out that command center once again. And this is going to be a favorable trade. Overall, that command center is going to get wiped out. So right now, Doodle starving Frost out. And those siege tanks still having trouble getting into providing sort of reinforcements as that science vessel... <clears throat> ...not providing any, any form of detection while it is stasis. 
So essentially, Doodle's like, okay, we're just going to continue to fight over the 6 o'clock, and I'm just going to rely on the fact that if you try to sneak out, Arbiter down, uh, if you try to sneak out, I'm just going to pounce on everything. And continuing to inhabit the 6 o'clock, some vultures sneaking across to try to cut off reinforcements. I don't know how long that's going to last. I'm not sure you need to worry about cutting off reinforcements while you still haven't been able to evict uh, the main fort, the bulk of the army in your main. Observer wandering up, going to go ahead and clear out those mines. And this is, again, greedy from Frost. Frost it seems like an MO of his. Trying to take additional expansions while there's literally nothing... Honestly, I feel like you have very little to defend. Vulture scooting out to the 3 o'clock. Both Zelt's going to get wiped out there. Frost now pushing back into the 6 o'clock to try to get some territory there. And Doodle regrouping his army in the mid. Frost has a lot of territory to defend now. Doodle again at 200 supply. And keep in mind, my, uh, deducting the SCV count, that's only about 60 supply worth of army for Frost to cover essentially three bases. And try, well, two and a half bases. He wants to try to establish that 6 o'clock. He's only got vultures defending that upper right. He's just relying on Doodle not moving in and capitalizing. Fortunately for him, Doodle's army starting to bear down towards that north. That's providing time, though, for Frost to hopefully migrate some troops up there. It looks like he is, in fact, doing so. The SCV's distance mining. Yeah, the siege tanks cut off from reinforcement points. So Doodle, free to go ahead and just dive into that 3 o'clock. Frost realizing it lifts off that command center and pulls out and loses some SCV for his effort. And while that's happening, I guess this is kind of Frost's game. He's like, okay, we can't, you can't keep all of these expansions out of my hand at once. So he's, while that's happening, snuck in. But an Arbiter's there recalling on all of this. Again, all that army to the north and out of position. I didn't even see that Arbiter. SCV's wandering in to try to mine. And Siege Tank's uh, desperately trying to sneak into that 6 o'clock. That command center once again might get picked off before it's even able to retreat into the main. So that's another command center picked off. Doodle's army regrouping in the middle of the map again to maybe go for another attack there. So now Frost looks like he might get starved out through some beautiful recalls and troop positioning of Doodle. So that getting evicted, but while that's happening, he's like, okay, your army's up there. Let me go ahead and re-engage across your one mining base. This could be GG right here if Doodle is able to breach this 3 o'clock. Reinforcements moving up. A stasis could be game ending. Stasis on three siege tanks on that low ground. I don't know if Doodle has enough forces to peel through. He might be able to just go ahead and ninja in and take that last mining command center out. Is pushing up to do so. Science vessels there. Might be able to EMP their huge amounts of stasis to create a blockade to allow these Dragoons to do their work. No group repair from the SEV, so Frost's base out. Another command center being built at the 6 o'clock, but for the moment he is not mining. Or distance mining at best. Both science vessels taken out in the air. <laughs> I guess this is the advantage of preemptively building command centers is you can move that command center back in position immediately. Once you end up losing it, but Doodle commanding this game at this stage. His natural expansion in main basically mined out, but he's mining at four bases otherwise. Is still at max supply, double the supply of Frost. Level 3 weapons, level 1 armor. Still a decent Arbiter count. And Frost's army just really doesn't know where to go here. Again, does he defend the 6 or does he defend the 3? And Doodle's been a good job of being where Frost isn't in a lot of these engagements. Looking to re-engage. Frost moving half his army. And unfortunately, half his army isn't going to cut it right here. Arbiter looking to move up to get another huge stasis. Another decent stasis. Only catching about half those siege tanks. Honestly, it felt like that should have caught more. But that's going to allow the Zealots getting on top of the rest of these units. And he's peeling in. There's GG from Frost. He does not have enough army to defend Doodle's onslaught. So Doodle taking both games. He will advance. And we will move on to the final match between Frost... And uh, I forget who we had in game one. And uh, not Doodle. <laughs> Doodle was in this match. And uh, Scout. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.